So on this week's episode of Make It With Calvin, I'll be showing you guys how to avoid this, this, and this. Oh yeah, and making a complete mess of your workbench in the process. So stick around and find out. Okay, so this week, I decided I was going to do something a little bit different because I'm trying to figure out what kind of supports works better for what applications. So I found me this little uh, minion model here on Thingiverse. I thought it was like totally great. And I also chose it because of what he was carrying had a large area that needed support material. This one was done without it. And you can see back here turned out horrible. I mean, it literally had like PLA hanging down to the build bed. It was great. So, that said, I also took specs on how much material and how long it took. This guy only took 46 minutes and 1.21 meters of filament. You'll see why that's important in a minute. Then I jumped into Cura, which is the slicer that I use here on my Ultimaker 2, and determined that the go to supports that I use is great usually because it it tends to usually give a better looking underside, so why not use grid? So I then ran the minion model with grid supports, and in the process of trying to remove them, absolutely destroyed the model. I mean, this thing was like, to get, um, the other thing to keep in mind is to get the supports to print back here, because of the angle, I had to totally change the settings, so pretty much the whole model was encased in support material, which was an absolute nightmare to remove it. Also to print with the grid supports besides it breaking off the base and being a nightmare to remove took an hour and 20 minutes and 2.04 meters of filament. That's definitely a bit more than 1.21. I mean and this is just a small model that we're talking here. You, you scale this up all of a sudden you're talking instead of a couple of cents worth of filament you're talking potentially a dollar or two, if not more, in filament that you're wasting, as well as time. I mean, don't get me wrong, grid supports are great in certain applications, like, let's just say on this little uh, case here, on, the, on this area, or inside of, say, like this opening, it's very easy to get your finger in there and knock it out and scrape it with a exacto blade. It has its place. But on a complex little model like this, or even something like the 3D Benchy here, where how the heck are you going to crush it out of in there? I mean, you got to keep that in mind when you're doing the supports. So, GRID has its place, but man, was it a nightmare. Next up was the line supports, which is actually kind of interesting because Simplify 3D, which I'm hoping to purchase sometime in the near future, is a super popular slicer and it uses line style support. So I said, you know what? Let's give it a try. Let's see how it compares. And it only took an hour and eight minutes and used 1.69 meters of filament. And as you can see here, the underside oops, of the item the minion is carrying actually turned out, gosh, I can't even, the underside there turned out, you know, decent. I mean, all things considered, comparing it to the absolute disaster that was this guy and this guy, I mean, it, it, it made a difference and it was a lot easier to remove, although it did only take an hour and eight minutes and 1.69 meters of filament, which is a lot better than the grid supports, which was obviously the most filament using. Last was the post style supports that Mesh Mixer produces. Now, I will say that these are definitely a bit more finicky to work with, and you can run into problems where the posts start on an item and then work their way out. Can leave a little bit of a scar if you don't make your top and bottom thickness tall enough, but I tend to think that's a little bit easier to fix than other things. So, on this model here, you can see down, hopefully you can see it, where is it? 
might be kind of hard to see, but down in there, I have a little bit of mesh mixer supports and it did leave behind a little bit of a scar. Nothing horrible though. And overall, I have to say that this model turned out absolutely incredible. I mean, considering it oops, literally lays out almost like, the best way to describe it is either like twigs or coral or something. It literally just lays like these little tiny branches and your printer just, you know, deposits filament on them. And they're really nice and easy to remove with either an X-Acto knife and or a pair of flesh cutting snips. It's amazing. Also, it used the least amount of filament at 1.41 meters. So it only used 0.2 meters of filament more than the Zero Support model and used, only took 58 minutes to print. I mean, if you're doing a ton of prints, you also got to factor in the, f the fact that it took me like two, three minutes to get the supports out. And here's the kicker. You can control exactly, I mean exactly where the supports go. Unlike in a slicer like Kerr, which is great, I mean, it gets the job done. The problem is there is no way to control, okay, I want supports here and I don't want supports there. This allows you to go in there and add supports, remove supports, thicken the supports. You can control all that, which is really nice. But I do have to say the supports that it generated worked good. I just went in there and added a couple of little um, braces to make sure that the supports were going to be more sturdy. So overall, I have to say that in my little um, testing shootout here, the mesh mixture supports actually really surprised me how well they worked, followed by the line supports generated in Cura. Does that mean that I'm not going to use grid supports? Heck no. I'm still going to use them, but you got to think it through and you got to be more careful where you put it. So I hope this helps you guys a little bit with supports. If you're still not sure, stick with your slicer, but if in doubt, just go with line supports unless you have something that really requires the density of a grid support. Sometimes more isn't always better. I mean, what can I say? I wasn't, wasn't counting on these kinds of results here. So I hope you guys found that interesting. Um, I have a link in the video description to a video about tips and tricks when working in Mesh Mixer. I feel like it's a program that has a lot of potential, but it doesn't get seen very often. So till next time, have fun and stay safe.